Hello and welcome to CS230 Web Information Processing and to this short series of lessons on CRUD-based access of the Node.js REST API using jQuery. And this first lesson is going to focus on developing the front end, that's the forms and styling of the app. So let's have a look at the app running first. So we can see that this is a, a very, very simple form um, that allows us to be able to add users to a database. And we have another simple form that allows us to show the user database. Now, I say it's a database, but actually it's an in-memory database running inside a Node.js app service that's running on my MacBook here. So, and we're going to make connections. So that service that, that's running on the Mac is um, an API, okay, an applications programming interface that allows us to be able to perform and respond to um, CRUD activities. And CRUD is, of course, C for create, R for retrieve, U for update, and D for delete data that's stored in this database. We use Ajax, as we've seen earlier, that allows us to be able to make the calls from within this single page application, or SBA, that, allow, that, that allows us to be able to contact and engage with the API over a network. Okay, so it's very straightforward. Let's have a quick look to see that the application is running. So yes, I have a running, this, uh, an application running. Um, um, in a terminal window, I use Node on this file called index.js, and I can run this application, and we can see that the server is running in port 8000. If we switch back, we can see that here I've connected to the localhost 8000. I can reload this, actually, just so we can see it work happening here. And we see that this service sends us this page as well, this HTML page. And we can look at the actual um, source codes as well. So here's the source code that's been sent to the user. You can see this is fully commented code, and I'll make this available for you to have a look as well. So let's get checking and working on the on the first part, which is the forms and the styling. So you can see it's got a particular style here, and I use Bootstrap to be able to do all of this styling, um, and uh, the little boxes, everything, all the forms. I didn't write these forms myself. I used the form generator, Bootsnip, to do this. So um, we can have a look at that as well. But let's get it working first. So let's type in the first name, John, surname, Keating, John out here .com, and let's send user data. And now you can see that I got a message. I sent the data using Ajax. The page didn't change. It's a single page application. Um, and the user John Keating was added to the database. Now this message that I display, this modal here, you can see it's a modal because I will stay here until I click the actual box to get rid of it. Okay, this modal uses data that was actually sent back from the API. So it wasn't using what was in the form because you can see the form is cleared again once I've actually submitted it. Okay. Um, let's get rid of this, and we can actually look at the retrieve database by clicking this button here, and we can see here's the database, and it's returned as kind of a JSON, JSON structure. Now, if we switch to the service, you can see that um, I have some information been presented to the user, and um, um, just for information purposes, some logging. Okay, and you can see that we received an information which was a form, basically. So we've received form data from our service. Um, our service received this form data from our forms, and then we retrieved this data, received this data here, and the message is to say the database was requested. And if I go back and make another request, for example, to the database, just to get it again, I've done it again, and um, so you can see the database was requested. So every time I make a, a call, it gets logged. So let's put in the second one, Joe blogs, and Joe has an email as well. So Joe at here.com, Joe at here.com, send those data, and Joe blogs is added to the database. Let's get rid of the modal, and let's retrieve the database. And we can see we've got both of this. And this particular piece of um, this form here, I've set it up in a way, I've written some, some jQuery to auto stretch or auto extend or expand this text area just to show all the data that's here. So it's a fairly straightforward and simple application. Um, in truth, as I said before, it doesn't actually write to a database, but you can see when we retrieve the database, it's telling us here we received this data, Joe Blogs, and now we're showing the database. So this is a nice logging way um, to, 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 to use if you're going to be doing this kind of work. Okay, so let's go back. So, so there's a couple of different styling things going on here. So my forms are just general forms, and I use Bootsnip to create these forms. So you can see this is the form that I've created. Um, to show the user database one, and I had a button, and I treat the databases, um, and you know, you, I automatically generate. So I have a whole series of inputs that I could add, I could add this and add some inputs to this form. I can drag and drop them, take them off again, um, and uh, then I can just look at the HTML. And so I can look at HTML. I can select the HTML. I can copy it and C, and I can go to my code and I can just paste it as I have done here. So here's the here's the um, 
the form. It's a bootstrap style form from Boot Bootsnip, and the link is here for you. And you can see this is the form that I use. Now, there's a little bit of modification in terms of the labeling that went on here, and then um, and the various buttons and so forth. So you you know it's uh, you need to do that work yourself, but it's fairly straightforward. You can click on on any form. So let's just create a new form quickly. So text input here. I can click this and I can change the name, text input, the label text, the placeholder, help text, all this kind of stuff. So you can do all these changes yourself. So it's very very useful. So Bootstrap is um, the styling. You know that's a uh, responsive um, framework that's styling. It's just some JavaScript and um, W3 schools have a really nice tutorial on using Bootstrap. But um, And you can work through the demos yourself, but uh, this works nicely um, if you use Bootsnip. If you are using Bootsnip, of course, you're going to have to add the, um, the jQuery. <laughs> it won't work unless you actually load jQuery, so you can do that here by um, by uh, including a link in your HTML document. So this is my index.html, and we're including Bootstrap here, and we're including the Bootstrap JavaScript stuff here as well. So the styles are here, and these are here, and um, I pulled these down from these websites here. So I copied this information from W3 School, so it's latest and it's up to date. Okay, You'll notice that I had a modal. When I added data to the database, I got a modal appearing, and that modal actually wasn't styled with Bootstrap, although I could have done that. I just styled that modal using w3.css. And I used a modal that's here, and it's, you know, you can try this modal yourself if you want to just look at the examples. And then um, I can open a modal, and you can see this modal works with w3.css. I close it, and I styled mine a little bit. I used some of the sample code that was here, and I styled it. Um, so that it would work for my application. So it's a good way to do it. So you know you don't have to you don't have to write all this code yourself. You know you can copy and code that you use from builders, and it's the same for table builders or form builders. You know they're everywhere. I, I did use a little bit of extra styling here for the Bootstrap forms. You know I like this font myself, uh, Verdana centered, um, and I like the legend that I had a little bit um, as well. I wanted to style those a little bit. And we can see that it's very straightforward. Here's the form that picks in the data. This is for the first name. This is for the surname. This is for the email. And this is the submit button. And, you know, I gave them all names and I, I made them work fine. And then this is the other style, which is the one for the, um, the form. We looked at this already. And this then is the style for the modal. Okay, and it's not very long, and I just copy and pasted some some basic demo code from the w3.css um, tutorials. And then I modified them a little bit as well, so that wasn't too bad. And and that's it, really. You know, that's um, how this works. So those are that's the style. I didn't write a single line of HTML myself. I automatically generated it and used it here. And I'm perfectly fine with you doing that for your assignments. Um, the rest of this is some jQuery, and we'll see a little bit about how that works. So this is the file that's uh, that's working um, on the front end, and allows us to be able to have a, a, a stylish. Um, front end to our single page application that we use. Okay, so um, that's the uh, the first part, really, where we're just going to look at some forms and styling um, for this app. Um, what's important to realize or take from this, I guess, is that the styles were made by frameworks, Bootstrap or W3.css. The forms were built using a form builder. I didn't hand code very much of the code. I made some, I made some changes to those, and we were able to quickly develop a front end using um, all of these extra tools for us. Okay, we leave it there. Thank you very much for watching.